In this example, I've got a uh, map that I've added from add location. And in layout, which is over here, we've got that same SketchUp model referenced a couple times uh, at a different scale. Showed you how to do that in one video. This one is going to be all about textures. So first things first, in your preferences, SketchUp preferences, uh, applications, make sure you have Photoshop to set to be your image editor. Uh, if not, pause and do that now. Very important. So any image in SketchUp is um, just a material. It's a material that exists in your material browsers. And I'll do two things here. One, I'll just create a, a shape. And I'm going to click on the bucket to open up my material browser. And right now, notice the only one I've got is this, which is that Google Earth snapshot. But if I were to uh, navigate down to, say, stone, and let's put this guy, and let's do that one. Now, at this scale, you can't see it, but if you zoom in, you can see that it's a repeating texture. So two things happened. We can see that it is a repeating texture, and if you go to the in model location, which is always what the little house means, shows you stuff in your model, um, we can see that that is also a texture in our model. So any one of these we can edit in Photoshop. Um, let's do, let's do, I'll show you two ways. So first way is this stone one. In your editor browser, there's a, there's some very basic editing you can do here. Now, Windows, you'll want to highlight it and click the edit tab. Mac users, highlight it, right click and go to edit. You can change the width and the height just within SketchUp. So if I change my width to uh, 600, by 600 feet, I can see that it's much larger. So these are giant stones. You don't have to constrain height and width. So if I click the little lock here, that'll break that connection. So now I'll say 100 feet. So now it's a very skewed and stretched uh, thing. But let's put it back to 600. So um, that has nothing to do with the actual image itself. It is just being scaled within SketchUp. But if we wanted to edit that repeating image, um, you need to look for this icon right here. And I'll show you another way when we get to the image how to get to that. So that will take you into Photoshop. So for whatever reason, uh, you may want to change the hue of this you know, to something more reddish, or uh, perhaps you just want to change the saturation. So there's a very kind of volcanic red type color. Looks good. All I need to do is save this. As long as I haven't added any layers, and I don't know why my layer window is so big, um, you can still save this as an exact same JPEG copy exactly where it's at. Uh, file, save, add, or just a save. You'll be prompted with this, just hit OK. And when you go back to SketchUp, look what happens. Now that was very subtle. Let's do something a little bit more extreme. Actually, I'll just invert it. So. That's a command I or control I, shortcut for save, go back to SketchUp, and that is reflected. And that's kind of cool. So that's how easy it is to edit uh, textures in Photoshop. Now, because that's a repeating texture, if I were to paint something on here, let's go. I'll ro always right click with your brushes, that'll make um, the brush size bigger. I think I've mentioned more than once, when in doubt, right click. All right. Yeah, so let's save that. Wonderful. And I can see that it is repeating. I'll come back to SketchUp, edit. And I know I'm going very fast, but that's what the pause button is for. There we go, repeating texture. So let's get rid of this. Now, you'll notice if, um, if you add a bunch of textures in your SketchUp model and colors, Whoops, I didn't need to color the whole thing. Got to deselect it first. So paint bucket, choose a color, apply, choose a color, apply. Uh, on this back side, I'll go to in models and I'll even apply you know, that because it's just a texture. And uh, let's add another, let's do vegetation. There we go. So all of these are now living on, on this block over here, but if I get rid of that block and go back to my in model, which is right here, 
they're still showing up. So anytime you use one thing, and this applies to styles, to um, textures, to a few other things, to components, uh, they're saved in the model. So if I were to save this and upload this, you would see those in the in model. Really good tip to know here. If you go to window and model info, and then to statistics, we've got an option here to purge unused. So just keep an eye on my palette. They went away. And my vegetation is still apparently living somewhere. I don't know why. Um, you can also right click on it and hit remove and then it will just get applied with the, um, the default color. So that's one way to edit the image. The other way to edit the image is to navigate until you can select the face. Now let me relock this because uh, I skipped a step that you did not see. Um, when you first import a scene using the add location it will come in as locked. You can unlock it by right-clicking and clicking on unlock. Now it's just a group and hopefully you know by now to edit a group you double click and just keep double clicking until you can select the individual geometries which are either going to be faces or edges. Now these edges are hidden so you can't really see them but um, when you have navigated that far right-click on the image go to texture and select edit texture image. So this is the same way to edit the same image just a different way. So if I click on here, it will open up in Photoshop. So very quickly, let's close that one. Um, I'll show you a couple tools that are really helpful. One is the clone tool right here. It's a kind of a couple step process, but really powerful. So there's my brush size. It's a circle. If I right click, I can choose a different brush size. So let's do something with a rough edge and I'll make it larger, some kind of looking over here. Um, looks good. Nah, actually I changed my mind. I'm gonna go back to a circular shape with a fuzzy edge. So if I click anywhere, it will close that and uh, you'll get warned, but that's all right. So you need to specify the source and you do that by holding down option and clicking. So if I move my cursor over to these trees, option, click, I've set that as my starting point and I can kind of see a little ghost of um, what I'm about to paint. So look at two things. Look at where my cursor is at right here, but then also look in this area as I'm painting and you'll see that little crosshair. It's showing you where you are. So if I go too far, I'm going to hit water here. So I don't want to, hopefully don't want to paint river up there. But really good tool just for uh, kind of cheating images. If I zoom in here and, uh, you know, let's say we want to get rid of this parking. I'll maybe borrow some of this grass by option clicking. I'm going to right click to make this smaller. This is a really horrible job, but you'll get the idea. And if I save this, you can probably imagine what will happen. It's updated in SketchUp. Let's go back, undo that a few times, save again, should be updated. The downside to this image though, it's, it's a very low resolution. Um, as you can see, if we zoom in, let's grab a different tool. That car is not very good. So you can adjust the image resolution, but it's not really going to help much. Um, so what you'll probably want to do is find a higher resolution. So in the class exercise files from last Wednesday, there's one called um, 2010 lines GE Pro. Same rough area, just a, a nicer resolution. So we can see that car has a little bit more detail. Now. What I could do, which would be totally incorrect, is to select this just by going um, Command A or Control A, Command C to copy, and then back over here, Command V to paste. So I could transform this, and I that is a Command T, and I'm kind of dragging here and doing this a couple times. And I could manually align this, but in doing this, it, it's downsampling. It's, it's changing the resolution and um, it's defeating the purpose of getting a higher resolution image. So what I like to do is go the other way around. I'll take the low resolution one, select it, either just drag the marquee or do uh, shortcut A, shortcut C, back over here, uh, sh shortcut V, which is Command V or um, Control V. Now this again only works because these are the exact same images. One is a higher resolution. What's important in this step is that your height and width remain the same. So now the tricky part is to align this one that we just imported to um, 
um, to be exactly on top of the higher resolution. So, you know, you can do the transform shortcut and just kind of eye it and keep moving around. And uh, you can change the opacity. Um, I'm going to hit enter to register that because I'll get it kind of in the ballpark. I'll show you some easier ways to do this. Oh, that's a horrible resolution. Why is that so? Oh, I didn't apply it. There we go. There we go. So, you know, there's, there's a bunch of ways to do this. You know, here's one that I like. I will set the mode to difference. So when anything is in difference, uh, if a pixel is exactly the same, it's black. If it's completely different, it will be pure white. So that white looks kind of funky right now. Let's turn off that other layer. Um, just, you also kind of want to look for things that you can align. And, and I like this corner, you know, right here. That's, that's something that's easy to match up with both images, even more so if the two images are completely different. Um, so there it is there. I can kind of just eye it. And once that is close, you can do Command T or Control T. Hold on Shift. That will lock the aspect ratio because you don't want to be doing this. I let go of Shift. Let's hit it again. And um, just kind of keep nudging it until it gets good. The other thing you can do is um, as you are dragging a corner, holding down Shift, you can also hold down, I think it's a Control on Windows and it's um, Option on a Mac. So I'm holding two buttons down with one hand while I'm dragging with the other. And it's dragging around this anchor point right here. So we can kind of add a few things together here. Um, we know that we can scale around this anchor point. We know how we can manually line up that corner. So see what I'm doing here? I think I'm still in transform. I am. So um, when you're in transform mode, you can't turn off layers. So you'll have to uh, hit enter a couple times to register that. But what I'm trying to do is get the corner of that building. Now, I should point out, as I'm doing this, it's terribly destructive to this top image that keeps on resampling and it's going to get worse and worse quality. But um, that's okay because we're just going to use it to crop this other image. So back to this layer, transform. This time I will grab that anchor point and drag it after I've got that building lined up. So now I will scale around that point right here. Zoom out, hold down my correct modifier keys, and what you're looking for is the point where things are most black. So right about, yeah, that looks pretty good. Once that's set, hit enter. And uh, let's jump straight to the crop tool. I think the crop tool will snap two layers. I'll drag it larger. Make sure you don't have perspective set right up there. There we go. So I'm cropped to that exact aspect ratio. I can now get rid of that layer because that's all we wanted it for. So here's here's the image. Now, something I haven't shown you yet. We could match this pixel count to be exactly like this pixel count. Um, but there's a little bit easier way to do this. Because this is the same height and ratio or height and width, um, what I'm going to do is um, I'll just save this and I'll show you another way to swap it out. So I'll save that to the desktop and call it that. And, um, you know, just for the heck of it here, I'm going to intentionally make a bad one. Save as. There we go. So, Again, this whole process was just to get to here. The same exact area, just a better resolution, but the, uh, the aspect ratio is exactly the same. So back to SketchUp, um, which is over here. So I guess uh, one thing we could do is import that image, too much work. So let's edit that just like we did before. Um, using the browser window here. So there it is. Right click, edit. And before we do this, you don't want to click the 
edit mon or the, the icon, we want to reload this and it's it's not named very well. On the Mac, click this drop down list, click on load. On Windows, you should see a little folder with a blue arrow right next to that. That's what you'll want to click. So load and replace. Keep an eye over here. And in fact, let me zoom in on that car. Whoops, too many buttons. Oh, I don't know what I just did there. Something I did not mean to. There's the car. Okay, so I just wanted to position this. So when I load this image, keep an eye on that. You should see it magically get better. Eh, uh, it was off a little bit in my Photoshop work, but pretty close. If I undo and redo, you can see. Let's go back. Redo, close, redo, edit material. Um, one final thing to point out is uh, under your preferences, SketchUp preferences, uh, Windows users, I think you are underneath Windows and preferences. Go to OpenGL. Make sure this is selected. Use maximum texture size. Very important. So that has now swapped out. Oh yeah, I was going to show you the incorrect way. If it's not the same aspect ratio, which that other one was not that I created, I won't show it to you. I'll just do it. Um, let's see what happens. Load, do not replace. And I'm not even quite sure, but this one is much taller than it is wider. Will it stretch? I don't know. Let's find out. Nah, it is not what you wanted. I don't think it stretched it, but it's definitely not what you want. So just make sure you have the same height and width um, aspect ratio, not size. So if I save this, and notice I've been kind of orbiting and zooming in. I'll draw some other stuff out here just for the fun of it. I will save this. Go back to um, layout. Right click, update reference. Oh, I should have zoomed in so you could see. And it is actually better. It doesn't look like it, but it is. There's a couple of ways to render an image in layout. You can either render it with raster or render with vector. So if I do a, a or a hybrid, if I'll, I'll, this is a totally another topic, but just be aware of this. If I set that to hybrid, notice that that got a lot better. And uh, you'll get a little warning saying it'll take longer to render. So more on that later on. But hopefully with this, you just know how to swap out textures. And I've got a couple more videos I'd like to create showing you some fun SketchUp texture-y stuff. But that's it for now.